In this video, we're going to talk about EV charging in the future. And by in the future, I mean the near future, as in it's already started and I don't even have a watch on. We'll look at new EV charging stations you'd actually want to visit, as well as new options for people who live in the city. And we're going to look at some new cool technologies that are coming in the future. And remember, my friend, future events such as these will affect you in the future. The first thing we're going to talk about is the North American charging standard. In 2022, to qualify for federal funding, Tesla opened up its Tesla charging standard to other manufacturers. Teslas have always had access to the supercharger network. Almost all of the other EVs that are capable of DC fast charging use this plug, known as a CCS. By using an adapter, they can now access the Tesla supercharger network, as well as the existing CCS networks. Ford was the first company on board with the North American charging standard, and it seems all of the other manufacturers are also getting on the North American charging standard using adapters in 2024, but in 2025 they will actually have the same charging port built into the car that a Tesla has. So over the next few years, as the J3400 NAX plugs will become the new standard, what happens to all the old non-Tesla charging networks? Well, three of the largest are ChargePoint, Electrify America, and EVgo. And they've all announced plans to add NAX plugs to their charging stations. This leads to a healthy market competition between the Tesla superchargers and all of the other networks as they add the North America charging standard. This can only be good for us as consumers as the networks have to offer more to us to get us to use their service. To see what this might look like, let's hop across the pond to the UK where Shell Oil is building new EV charging stations at existing Shell gas stations. This one is in Fulham, London. It's an attractive design using sustainable materials. Solar panels are built into the canopy roof to provide around a quarter of the site's electricity. And since it's based on a gas station, they'll have drinks and snacks for sale. They'll also offer free Wi-Fi and comfortable seating. Let's take a look at GridServe, a sustainable energy company that has taken EV charging stations up to a premium level. The beautifully designed charging stations feature multiple charging networks, Coffee and snacks are available, and then you can relax in the lounge. You can also test drive an EV, or you can lease an EV. Businesses can rent meeting rooms there. Canadian media company Electric Autonomy held a design competition for future EV charging stations that would actually be someplace you would enjoy visiting. DC fast charging stations like that would be great for when you are traveling. But one of the best things about electric vehicles is that you can charge them at home. Not many people have a gas pump in their driveway, but it's very easy to put a charger at your house. There are currently about 196,000 gas stations in the U.S., about three times more than the number of public chargers. But the number of gas stations is dwarfed by the number of home chargers. And comparing the amount of time it takes to charge, of course, DC charging wins because you can charge in sometimes as little as 10 or 15 minutes. But level two is the best choice for home charging. You don't need to charge in just 10 or 15 minutes when you're at home. You can charge overnight and start every morning with a full charge in your car. But what about the millions of people who live in the city or in apartments or condos or otherwise don't have a garage or driveway? What do they do? A new company called It's Electric has an innovative solution to put more level two chargers right on the streets where people are already parking. Currently, when an EV charger is installed, it requires expensive engineering studies permitting basically a lot of time and money. It's Electric partners with property owners in the city to unlock their untapped electricity supply while those property owners earn passive income. It's Electric takes care of all the permits, construction, and maintenance. The chargers can be installed in just a few days with no cost to the property owner. Okay, the chargers get their power from 
excess or unused energy already in the building. The chargers then go on to their own new electric meter, so there's no cost to the property owner. Its electric splits the revenue with the property owner, who then earns a passive income. Now, the chargers are well-designed, unobtrusive, look pretty good. EV owners can use the chargers by downloading a free app and signing up. They are then sent a free charging cable. The cable stays with the EV owner, and the cables can be either CCS or NAX plugs. Another company bringing EV charging into the city is called Gravity. Instead of level two charging, though, they are installing DC fast charging for the city. The first charging station is in a parking garage located in Manhattan. Because space is limited, Gravity has designed smaller chargers that can be mounted on the wall or the ceiling. These chargers provide an amazing 500 kilowatts of power. They can add 200 miles of range in five minutes. The power cabinet that supplies the charger can be up to 500 feet away from the dispensers. It uses a system that Gravity founder Moshe Cohen calls Distributed Energy Access Points, or DEEPs. These use the existing wiring of the building, which is designed to handle peak demand loads. Gravity's DEEP system avoids straining the grid by adjusting the power to the chargers second by second. The system can also be bi-directional. It could possibly use the car's batteries to balance the loads in the entire building. Gravity has also developed a smaller DC curbside charger that supplies 200 kilowatts of power. Similar to the It's Electric company that we just talked about in the last segment, Gravity partners with the owner of the building. Gravity takes care of construction, permitting, maintenance, and so forth. The building owner has no cost and receives part of the profits. Let's take a look at some out-of-the-box methods for EV charging. Instead of making the chargers faster and faster, why not just make the cars use less energy? According to Kelly Blue Book, the average driver in the U.S. drives 37 miles per day. Let's round that up to 40 miles per day. According to the EPA, the average efficiency of an EV is 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour. To drive 40 miles would take 15.4 kilowatt hours. The most efficient cars, such as the Tesla Model 3 and the Hyundai Ioniq 5, get around 4.2 miles per kilowatt hour. To drive 40 miles, they take about 9.5 kilowatt hours. Now imagine a super efficient EV that got 10 miles per kilowatt hour and could drive those same 40 miles using only 4 kilowatt hours of energy. It's called the Aptera. It's completely designed for efficiency. Its unique shape, of course, helps it cut through the air with less resistance, and its carbon fiber body gives it strength without the weight of a normal vehicle. Instead of a single motor, it has motors inside of the wheel hubs, making it lighter and more efficient. The first version of the Aptera, scheduled for 2025, will have a 40 kilowatt hour battery. On a regular EV, a 40 kilowatt battery gives you about 150 miles of range. But on the Aptera, you get 400 miles from the same battery. The first version will have fast DC charging with a max plug at 40 to 60 kilowatts. Later versions will offer even faster DC charging. For example, a 250 kilowatt DC fast charger would add 400 miles of range in 10 minutes. Because the Aptera is so efficient, it can actually use built-in solar cells to help recharge without plugging in. In a partnership with Maxion, Aptera has developed their own solar panels that will be built in their own factory. They have already started building both low-volume production line and their high-volume production line. They will be able to easily upgrade or change materials as new technology becomes available. These panels can curve in two directions. They are half the weight of other panels and extremely durable. They've been testing them for rocks, hail, and environmental damage. The owner of an Aptera can easily upgrade the solar panels when new tech comes out or replace them in case of damage. The entire package of 189 solar cells gives you about 700 watts with the possibility of adding even more panels for camping and etc. later. NEO has developed an interesting alternative to charging EVs in China, Europe, and eventually North America. 
Along with CATL, they have developed 150 kilowatt hour semi solid state batteries with a range of over 600 miles. Now, not only can these batteries be fast charged, but NEO has developed a system of stations that swap the batteries in just minutes. You pull into a battery swap location. The robotically controlled station then removes the old battery and replaces it with a fully charged battery. The old battery is analyzed, calibrated, and recharged for use in another vehicle. Any bad cells are pulled to the side and can be repaired. As of April 2024, NEO is now up to its fourth generation battery swap station. They do 480 swaps per day in a station. The service fees are around $5 to $7 plus $0.21 cents a kilowatt hour. And the stations can handle different size battery packs from multiple brands. NEO currently has over 2,000 of these swapping stations in Europe and Asia. Now, let's look at Ytricity, an American company that lets you charge your EV without having to plug in a wire. Just park and you are charging wirelessly. At 11 kilowatts, the Ytricity charger is as fast as a fast level 2 wired charger. The efficiency can be as high as 94% and adjust the charging demands of even smaller vehicles. A charging pad on the ground sends energy to a receiver on the car. The pad and the receiver are magnetically tuned to a specific resonant frequency, so power is transferred between them but not to anything outside of the system. The stray electromagnetic fields are safe for humans and animals similar to other consumer devices such as cell phones, microwaves, wireless routers, and other electronics. Ytricity wants to work with auto manufacturers to have these built into the vehicles. Taking wireless charging a step further, Norwegian company Inrex has developed roads that wirelessly charge electric vehicles while they are driving. Vehicles must have receiver plates attached to their underbodies to tap into the electromagnetic field and transfer the energy into the vehicle's battery. Several wireless in-road charging projects are currently underway in Detroit, Indiana, California, Europe, and elsewhere, retrofitting existing roadways. Near Orlando, Florida, the very first new highway is being constructed with the Inrex Charge 200 kilowatt electrified roadway technology. Inrex is working with the Central Florida Expressway and in partnership with Engineering Research Center, Aspire. The new State Road 516 will feature electromagnetic coils buried under the road that will charge vehicles as they drive over the coils. The road will be open to the public, but only test vehicles equipped with the special receiver plates will be able to charge. All classes of vehicles can be used from passenger cars to heavy-duty trucks and buses. Successful tests have been done in other locations with a charging power of up to 180 kilowatts. Inrex says the system at 516 will be the most powerful in the world with nearly a million watts of solar panels to help power the road. Inrex says they are bringing the charge to the vehicle instead of bringing the vehicle to the charge. In the future, roads like this could allow cars to use smaller batteries and not need to stop as frequently at charging stations since they are charging as they drive. That wraps it up for this video. See you in the next one. Ha 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 ha